Mm. Oh, bye-bye. So, what do we know about, um, what were they called? The um, clouds, the cloud catcher, the cloud catcher. Because the clouds, that was interesting. That was super exciting, wasn't it? When they were catching the cloud on the machine. But it wasn't totally clear what was going on. So I was doing some research. So the clouds are the things that keep their ship um, from, from to be able to fly. Their, their ship um, actually needs the clouds, the Scarlet Margaret. And down in the bottom of the Scarlet Margaret, there's a room where they keep the clouds, but they have to trap the clouds every once in a while. That's why they were hunting after the cloud and they caught it with the net and then they took it and they put it into the Scarlet Margaret. And that's what keeps the Scarlet Margaret from being able to float in the sky. Because if it didn't have any clouds stuck into the Scarlet Margaret, that wouldn't be able to fly. So that's what that's for. See, isn't that interesting? I wonder, I wonder if that's how airplanes work as well. Do you think airplanes have special clouds that they've hunted? Maybe on helicopters, when they catch the clouds and they put them into airplanes? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't think that's how airplanes work. You could look it up to find out. I think they use like special petrol and big engines. It would be better if they used clouds though, because it would be more, um, but we be more environmentally friendly. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Okay, here, chapter seven. That's where we are, remember? So, Echo followed Lil down the cramped corridors of the Scarlet Margaret to the armory. Lil had allowed Horace to come too, and although he hadn't really wanted to, being somewhat allergic to fighting lessons, Echo's pleading had finally persuaded him to tear himself away from the Beetle books he'd been reading and join her. They stopped at the end of a dimly lit corridor. Lil took a large key out of her pocket and unlocked the copper clad door. Welcome to the armory, she said. Flora will take things from here. Flora? Echo frowned in confusion and turned around to see that the younger girl had appeared behind them. But I thought you were teaching us to fight. I'm afraid not. I have my captain duties to attend to. We need to sell off some of the emergency booty. There's no gold left in the coffers and we have to buy supplies before we leave for trombones. But, but Flora's not even a growing up. Echo scowled. Flora is known for her fast footwork and excellent swordsmanship, said Lil, turning to Flora. Make sure they work hard. Lil patted Echo briskly on the shoulder and marched back up the corridor. The key still swinging from her fingers. Echo glanced after her, squashing her disappointment so Flora didn't see. She's barely spent any time with Lil for weeks. And how could Flora teach her anything? Echo was older than her. She folded her arms and glared at the younger girl's back as she swung the door open in front of them. Come in. Flora looked around quizzically at Echo. Of course. Echo forced a smile on her face. She would have to get this lesson over and done with and find an opportunity to show Lil her skills later. Inside, the armory was so gloomy, Echo could barely make anything out. Shall I fetch a lamp, said Horace. No, Flora snapped. No naked flames in the armory. There's so much gunpowder in here, the whole airship might go up. She took a jar that was hanging from a hook on the wall and gave it a shake. Immediately, it lit up with an eerie greenish glow. In the armory, we use glow bugs. Glow bugs, Horace stepped forward, all feelings of trepidation forgotten. Are they really? He peered into the jar. Why, yes, they are. How fascinating. Gilbert emerged from Echo's pocket and leapt onto the wall, climbing with his sticky toes until he reached the jar. He butted it gently with his snout and stirred at the little bugs crawling inside. They're not for eating, Flora grinned. 
Why don't you two wake the rest of them up while I get the cutlasses ready? Echo and Horace circled the room, gently shaking the jars and waking the little creatures until the whole room was filled with light. Now Echo could see rows and rows of cutlasses. Did we talk about what cutlasses are? Cutlasses are a sword. You probably worked that out for yourself. Gleaming on the wall, an array of flint lock pistols, that's a type of gun, on the other, and in one corner, a huge rack of cannonballs. I think you probably know what that is. Barrels of gunpowder were stacked to the rafters in another corner. Echo hugged herself with excitement. She was going to be a real sky pirate, a fighter. Look at all these weapons, she whispered to Horace. Horace swallowed. They look sharp. Oh, they are sharp, said Flora. Sharpest set of cutlasses in all the seven skies. The seven skies, Echo thought back to the postal pirate's message about the seven skies alliance. She cleared her throat and leaned casually on a barrel. Do you know anything about the seven skies alliance, Flora? She asked. Never even heard of it, said Flora, opening a large wooden chest. All I know is there are seven sky pirate clans, us, the, ski, the scurvy sea snakes, the dark hearts, the pitiless plunderers, the heartless violet pilots, the storm shakers, and the thunder sharks, of course. They are the absolute worst. Why? Echo's eyes grew wide. Flora's voice dropped to a whisper. They say their leader, Old Gus, keeps a shark tank in the hold of the ship, and if anyone crosses him, he feeds him to the sharks. Horace gulped loudly. Echoes, or sorry, Gilbert's scales turned white, and he hid his face in the collar of Echo's shirt. Anyway, both of you take one of these, Flora said brightly, reaching into the chest. And she held out two blunt, stubby swords made of a waxy, yellowish wood. Thanks! Horace stepped forward and took his. But Echo couldn't stop feeling disappointment that the flood through, flooded through her. These were child, these are children's swords. Was Flora mocking her again? Why can't I use Stinger? she asked. Flora grinned. Master these, then you'll be ready for Stinger. But they're for babies. They're for novices. Everyone has to start somewhere. Flora held out the wooden sword. Here, she said. Echo frowned and took it. Did Flora think she couldn't handle a real cutlass? She felt her cheeks flushed with shame. Did Lil, as Flora turned away to open another chest. Echo swiped the sword clumsily through the air and winced at the disappointingly unswishy sound it made. Horace turned to her. Well, I'm glad we're only using practice blades. I was worried she was going to make us fight with real ones. Echo scowled in response and turned to see Flora wheeling over a strange headless robot with two blunt swords for arms. Great. So they weren't even going to be fighting a real person. Meet your swordsmanship tutor, the swashbucklatron, Flora said. She pressed a button on the robot's shoulders and with a clank, it began to jab and parry blows at them. Horace leapt back, clutching his sword to his chest in terror. Echo made a running attack, but the swashbucklatron blocked her blow and she tumbled to the floor, landing awkwardly on one elbow. Not so fast, Echo, Flora chuckled. Flora hauled her to her feet. Let me demonstrate first. She took a cutlass with a gold hilt encrusted with emeralds from the wall and turned to face the robot. The swashbucklatron swished its blades and Flora retreated for a moment, then darted forward and with a quick flick wrist disarmed both of its swords. They clattered to the floor and the robot gave a dismal beep. Echo narrowed her eyes. Flora must be cheating somehow. How did she manage that? It's all about knowing when to attack and when to retreat, when to retreat said Flora brightly, replacing the cutlass in its rack. She swooped up the robot's blades and reattached them. Have another go. 
and we will find out more about how that went tomorrow. <sighs> Learning how to fight with swords or cutlasses, fighting against sword training robots. It's a pretty cool life these sky pirates have. It's very exciting. You wanna be a sky pirate? Maybe we could all be sky pirates. Arr. Okay, good night, beautiful Baba. We will read more tomorrow. <sighs> Catch it? Good girl. Okay, blow me one. Ah, I got you. Oh, no, 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 no. Good night, Baba. I love you.